Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. As you begin to explore the Leslie Palacio case, it is impossible not to feel bewildered and disappointed that justice has not yet been served. The killer remains at large, even though the police have all the evidence and his identity is known to them. Today's story underscores the difficulty of investigating crimes when suspects find themselves outside the jurisdiction and victims can only hope that the perpetrators will be found and brought to justice. The morning of the 29th brought anxiety to the home of Rusalia Palacio, mother of five lovely daughters. Her eldest daughter, Kayla, came down to the kitchen and reported that the bed in Leslie's room was untouched, her belongings were gone, and she clearly hadn't spent the night at home. One of the sisters joked that it must have been a pretty fun night at the club, and Leslie had probably stayed the night at Eric's. In fact, everyone became alarmed, since Leslie had never done this before. Over breakfast, Kayla kept glancing at her phone, expecting a waking Leslie to be about to text. Time passed, but still no word from Leslie. By noon, it stopped seeming normal. By late afternoon, Rosalia decided to go to Eric's house on her own and find out where her daughter had disappeared to. When the Palacio family members drove up to the house, they saw Eric's mother and his sister actively removing pieces of furniture and miscellaneous items from the house. Obviously, taking furniture out of the house is quite normal, but the situation itself and Mrs. Ibarra's crying face caused a very strange feeling for Rosalia. Something was not right here. When asked where Leslie was and why Eric's phone was unavailable, Eric's mother and sister pretended that they didn't even know that the couple had spent the evening together. Rosalia once again clarified whether Leslie had slept over at their house that night because she knew from her daughter's messages that she was going to Eric's house. After receiving a negative response, Leslie's family realized the seriousness of what was happening. Fears became reality, and the family immediately took action. The older sister, realizing that Leslie could not have disappeared so easily, began calling local hospitals and searching the internet for reports of accidents in the last 24 hours. However, the search was unsuccessful, as were attempts to contact Eric. He had either turned off his phone or the phone was deed, as Kayla couldn't even hear the voicemail. Rosalia had no choice but to call the police. The next day, August 30th, Leslie was officially reported missing. The move was the first in an intense fight for justice. Leslie Palacio was born on May 5, 1998, in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Her short but full life was full of love and caring for her family. Always open and friendly girl became a source of joy in any company, as she valued everyone she met in her life and was reciprocated. Leslie dreamed of connecting her life with medicine. After graduating from high school, she entered the Las Vegas Medical College. In 20 West 20, she was already confidently moving towards her dream of becoming a phlebotomist and worked part-time as a lab technician combining theoretical knowledge with practical skills. Leslie proved herself to be a talented student. Her academic achievements were admirable. She was able to easily assimilate new material and always strive to deepen her knowledge. That is why the girl decided to work part-time as a laboratory assistant. Unexpectedly, Leslie realized that she had found her calling and soon became an integral part of the team. Colleagues considered the student not only a responsible and professional lab technician, but also a warm, responsive person. The girl's duties included conducting various analyses and tests, but for Leslie, this work was much more than just a fulfillment of duties. She saw her calling in the ability to make the process of taking tests as comfortable as possible for patients. Her caring and patience created an atmosphere of trust and even those who were apprehensive about the procedure felt at ease in her presence. When the youngest of the nurses asked if Leslie was afraid of getting her hands pierced all the time, she laughingly replied that she now had a super ability to poke people. The young optimist's vitality was evident in her every action. By all accounts, Leslie had the unique potential to become a sought-after and valuable specialist in the field of medical laboratory diagnostics, and she would have, if not for a dramatic turn of events. 
Leslie has been used to helping and caring for everyone since childhood. As the second of five daughters, she took on the role of mother when Roselia Palacio worked as a hotel cleaner. Roselia recalled her daughter kicking her out of the kitchen when she tried to cook dinner after cleaning more than 15 hotel rooms in a shift. Get some rest, Leslie gently urged her. Wanting to relieve her mother's burden after work, her daughter took it upon herself to prepare dinners and, in her characteristic easygoing manner, found cooking to be a source of inspiration. From then on, she always made sure her family members were very well fed, and even if she was away and couldn't make the family dinner herself, she always called home to make sure everyone had eaten. For Leslie, family came first, and she easily inspired her sisters with her energy and ideas. For example, even during the pandemic, Leslie didn't let sports disappear by organizing workouts in the backyard of the house. She taught her mother various exercises, and with her sisters she danced daily in front of the mirror to music. Her love of experimenting with hair color and image turned it into a joint business plan with her older sister to open a boutique. The sisters began designing and sewing dresses at home in their own unique style. When the coronavirus pandemic happened and Roselia was laid off due to downsizing, Leslie suggested her mother start her own small cleaning company and assured her that she would definitely help her with the cleanings in her free time from work and school. Mom, we'll be fine soon, you'll see, she assured Roselia. At a family council, they came up with a name for the company, the Palacio Cleaning Service. At the time Leslie disappeared, her dreams were just beginning to be realized. Their family firm had landed its first contract. But on August 29, 2020, all of the Palacio family's plans and dreams came crashing down. At the end of August 2020, Leslie completed the lab assistant program, and the family firm also received a large order. The girl decided it was time to take a break from the stresses and worries and enjoy an evening of dancing and fun. Especially the restrictions due to the pandemic were gradually being lifted and Las Vegas began to come alive. Unfortunately, none of the friends wanted to keep Leslie company. Although people were beginning to let go of their fears and return to their normal lives, they still felt nervous and anxious at the prospect of being in a closed space with lots of people. Leslie didn't give up hope of convincing someone to have fun and posted a post on Instagram expressing her desire to spend the evening somewhere. Unexpectedly, she received a message from Eric Rangel Ibarra. Leslie and Eric's parents had been attending the same church for 14 years and occasionally socialized. So the children had known each other since childhood, but had never interacted closely. Leslie knew what Eric liked. The guy texted her, showed her attention, but Leslie never reciprocated. She was polite to him, however. On any other day, Leslie would have declined Eric's desire to keep her company, but not this time. She was eager to dilute her ordinary life with a fun evening. The whole day passed in anticipation and anticipation. And when none of Leslie's friends wanted to keep her company, she accepted Eric's polite and warm offer to reminisce about Las Vegas nightlife. Sharing a night out with Eric seemed like a better choice than going nowhere at all. Expecting a fun adventure, Leslie had no idea what horrible events awaited her, but she probably had a premonition of something, trying to rationalize to herself that there was no cause for concern. Anyway, Leslie agreed with her sister that she would send her regular messages telling her exactly where she was. She also told Kayla in great detail where she was going and with whom and what places she might end up in. After a while, the older sister received a strange message. Can you believe Eric is totally not going to drink this evening? We're at a party, but it looks like I'm going to have to party alone. Afterward, the sisters exchanged joking messages on the topic of healthy living. The first place Eric and Leslie went to was the casino at the Longhorn Hotel. Police officers would later see on surveillance footage of the couple getting out of a white Ford F-250 
owned by Eric at 0.31 a.m. on Ayug, 29 and entering the casino, then leaving a short time later at 1.56 a.m. The couple would then leave the casino. Leslie kept in contact with her sister, telling her what was going on. At 4.40 a.m., Leslie sent her sister another strange message. I need to talk to you about something shitty. Kayla asked what happened and, according to her, a text box popped up, as if Leslie had started to reply, but no answer ever came. That text message was the last of the girl's life. The morning of the 29th came. Leslie still hadn't returned home. The more time passed, the more concerned the Palacio family members became. The certainty that Leslie had stayed the night at Eric's house was replaced by confusion, and the family went to a familiar house, where they found a strange scene. Mrs. Ibarra and her daughter were taking out furniture, pretending that they had heard for the first time that Leslie and Eric had spent the evening together. In fact, Leslie's family arrived at Eric's house just in time. If they had arrived a few hours later, the investigation would have been significantly delayed. The police found traces of blood in the house, a mess in the bedroom, which suggests that Eric's mother and his sister spent the whole day, strangely enough, not to clean up the traces of the crime, but to pack things down to the pieces of furniture. The family was clearly not going on a picnic, but planning a long-term and thorough absence. Most likely, they had arranged to reunite with Eric and his father, Jose, in Mexico, where the two had traveled in order to escape justice. Upon seeing the Palacio family, Mrs. Ibarra probably realized that the chance to leave was gone, leaving evidence in the house that no one would take the time to clean up. Panicked, mother and daughter began to simply deny knowing about Leslie and Eric's evening together. It was this behavior that led to the suspicion that something irreparable had happened. Fortunately, the Las Vegas police took immediate action and sent out a billing inquiry intending to track Leslie's movements since the previous night. But unfortunately, it takes some time to get that data, while the Palacios couldn't sit back and wait. The family started a campaign to spread the word about Leslie's disappearance. People responded and began actively sharing the information on social media. No one expected that there would be so many people who cared. Eric's mom especially didn't expect it. Detectives kept asking more and more questions, and on August 31st, Mrs. Ibarra went to the police station and filed a missing persons report for her husband and son. Mrs. Ibarra told police that her son, Eric, left home late in the evening on August 28th. And when he returned the next morning, he was acting strangely. She saw him walk out the door and never returned. The police noticed a strange circumstance. Not only was Leslie missing, but Eric was also missing, as well as his father. Based on this, an investigation into the triple disappearance began, with the Las Vegas police involved. Detectives turned to the residents of the neighborhood with the hope of finding surveillance cameras that recorded something important. Luck smiled. It was discovered that just across the street from Jose Barra's home, there were surveillance cameras. In addition to the CCTV footage, police obtained billing data that allowed them to track Leslie's movements in the early morning hours of the 29th. Detectives found that the couple went to the casino and afterward to a grill bar, which they reached around 02.15 a.m. Accidentally or not, Leslie's cell phone was left at the bar and the records show that Leslie left the establishment around 5.50 a.m., which is quite early in the morning. At 0605 a.m., neighborhood cameras captured Eric's car pulling up to the family home. The nature of his assistance to Leslie in getting out of the car and on the way to the house clearly indicated that the girl was heavily intoxicated. At 0725 a.m., Eric and his father, Jose, are seen carrying Leslie's body out of the house, wrapped in a sheet, and placing it in the trunk of the car. Eric then drives away while Jose hoses down the driveway to their house. These actions clearly indicated that Eric and Jose were not missing but were fugitives from justice. After police saw the footage, 
a search warrant was obtained for Ibarra's home. As a result, detectives uncovered a lot of additional evidence showing that Leslie had not left the house voluntarily. The house had been cleaned with cleaning products in an unsuccessful attempt. Latex gloves and trash bags were also found. But the most important piece of evidence was the discovery in Eric's room. Traces of blood were found on the floor and on Eric's bed, an obvious sign of assault. And without DNA testing, it was clear to investigators that the blood belonged to Leslie. From that point on, Leslie Palacio was no longer missing and investigators focused their efforts on finding her body. Eric and Jose were reported missing. As investigators searched diligently for suspects, the shaken Palacio family made efforts as well. Ruselia asked members of the church community to help search for her daughter's body as search volunteers. Flyers and posters with Leslie's photo and images of Eric and Jose appeared on social media, newspapers, and street polls. The Palacio family is asking the public to intervene and help them find these two men involved in the girl's death, was the message on each flyer. The first major breakthrough in the investigation came when a license plate reader spotted Eric's car just six miles from his home around 10 a.m. August 29. He was heading back to his home just four hours after Leslie's alleged murder. The information uncovered made investigators realize that the location where Eric may have hidden the body was within a four-hour drive of his home on the Nevada-Arizona border or the Charleston Peak side, which is a huge area. So detectives were desperate for any additional information that could help them determine a more precise location. Once again, luck smiled on them when footage was recorded at a gas station 40 miles north of Las Vegas, showing Eric's car pulling off the highway toward the Valley of Fire National Park. The car backed up 20 minutes later with muddy tires. The find narrowed the search and pointed to the possible location of the body within 20 miles of the gas station. The mud on the tires suggested that Eric had driven off the road at some point. Detectives began searching the area. Police and volunteers combed through hundreds of acres of land, and on Sept. 9, during a second search, they found Leslie Palacio's body hidden near a bush. News outlets immediately spread the word. The body of 22-year-old Leslie Palacio has been found near the Valley of Fire, 11 days after she disappeared. A reporter joined the report, providing additional details about the prime suspect, 25-year-old Eric Rangel Ibarra. The Valley of Fire, where the body was found, is known for its hot climate, which led to rapid decomposition of the remains, and forensic experts were unable to determine the exact cause of death. Locals reacted to Leslie's death with horror and fear. Some became afraid to go outside because of the constant thoughts of the unquote criminals involved in the murder. The day after the body was discovered, September 10, many friends, relatives, neighbors, and just random people in the area gathered to honor Leslie's memory. People took candles that were used for the nightly vigil and placed them in front of the girl's house. They also said they wanted the man responsible for her death to pay for what he did. The fight for justice was not even close to being over at this point. The next major breakthrough came when Eric's car flashed in Moreno Valley, California. Police eventually contacted Eric's cousin, and he reported that he had driven Jose and his son to San Isidro, where he believed they planned to cross the border into Mexico. The Las Vegas Police Department requested assistance from the FBI because it was not possible for them to resolve the jurisdictional issue on their own. The investigation slowed down. Then, on January 19, 2021, four months after the discovery of the girl's remains, Eric's father, Jose, turned himself in at the border. Everyone was greatly relieved that at least one fugitive was now in custody. The man was quickly extradited back to Clark County and charged with destruction of evidence and accessory to murder. During interrogations, Jose tried to minimize his involvement in the crime, explaining the story of the trip to Mexico by his son's strange behavior on the morning of August 29th. However, investigators showing surveillance video footage debunked his false claims. 
The footage clearly showed him helping carry Leslie's body out of the house and washing the driveway. Faced with the evidence, Jose changed his testimony. He said he was working in the garage when Eric brought Leslie's body, wrapped in a sheet, into the garage. According to Jose, he panicked and helped his son load the body into the truck, assuming that Leslie had died of an overdose of illegal drugs because he saw no visible injuries on the body. Court documents indicate that Jose initially told police that, according to Eric, Leslie died of an overdose of illegal drugs. Jose also explained that Eric immediately talked about wanting to end his life, blamed himself, and so he decided that the best thing to do for his son was to take him to Mexico. When investigators asked Jose for Eric's current whereabouts, he explained that as soon as the two of them entered Mexico and boarded the bus, the bus was searched by Mexican authorities. He and his son got scared and decided to split up, thinking that apart it would be harder for the authorities to find them. For this reason, he would love to help the investigation, but has absolutely no idea where his son might be. On June 18, 2021, Jose formally pleaded guilty to destruction of evidence and accessory to murder. Despite the horrific characteristics of his crimes, Jose Ibarra was sentenced to only two years in the Clark County Detention Center, causing shock and dismay in the community. The Palacio family was shocked and outraged by Jose's lenient sentence, which they felt was unjust. During the pandemonium, Jose Ibarra joined the court proceedings virtually, while Leslie's family and friends attended in person. They urged the judge to impose a harsher sentence, arguing that two years was not enough for an accessory to murder who helped dispose of the body and hid the perpetrator. Jose Ibarra pleaded guilty and tried to apologize to Palacio's family, saying his love for his son outweighed him. He expressed regret for his actions. However, Leslie's family did not accept his apology and did not consider it sincere. To date, Eric's whereabouts remain unknown and he continues to live a free life in Mexico. Jose was released on April 28, 2022. Ophelia Marcarien, attorney and representative of the Palacio family, commented as follows. I am absolutely furious. This is simply unfair. Not only is the main suspect not in custody, now the one who was involved in covering up the murder is back in custody after serving eight months and 15 days. Over the past three years, the Palacio family has never gotten justice. Leslie's story highlights the flaws in the justice system and raises questions about fairness in dealing with serious crimes. The Palacio family is determined to fight to change the law in Nevada because they believe that whoever was involved in the murder should receive a longer prison sentence than two years. They hope that the perpetrator will be found and prosecuted in the United States, where he will be charged and given the punishment he deserves. Ophelia Marcarian is directly reaching out to those who may know of Eric's whereabouts in Mexico. In every media interview, she calls for Palacio's family to be given a small measure of justice. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss new stories from around the world. See you soon. Take care.